Uh, pretty much checking. I think that's ready to go. Vinny, you got the first uh, two press conferences. Uh, sorry, first two questions of the press conference. Oh, great. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Fire away, Ben. <laughs> Hi, Jürgen, again. Um, right. First of all, Jürgen, obviously you've announced today that Virgil van Dijk has signed a new long-term contract. Can you just give us your reaction to the, that good news for the football club? Yes, great news. Um, the good thing about this signing is that we know him already, that we used him before already quite successfully, and um, and we are really happy that he's happy here. And um, more so after that, obviously, very difficult last year that he is back on track, um, trains with the team and um, prepares his very successful, hopefully very successful future at this club. So, yeah, absolutely great, great news. Imagine we would have to buy this boy now. So, thank God we only had to give him a new contract. As you prepare to kick off the new season, how much are you as a group all looking forward to being back in front of, well, nearly full stadium uh, and, and back in front of fans? <laughs> Yeah, we, oh, we had we, we got a little uh, sense of obviously how it is with fans again uh, last Sunday and Monday. So it was absolutely great and changed the whole game. Uh, the little difference is now that we obviously play at Norwich and not in Enfield, and they will be exactly as desperate as our people as our people were um, before they went back to Enfield. So um, we have to we would, we are better ready for a proper fight there. That's what we are preparing for all the time now, um, because the competition starts and uh, the the, the preseason friendlies are over it's always nice to try a few things to test here and there but now all the other stuff um, is there again we play for points we play for for um, for our supporters obviously for fulfilling expectations dreams whatever so that is a difference but we had the longest preseason for a while especially the longest preseason um, with a big big squad together a lot of players uh, were involved in a full preseason some came back at least early enough, some came back a little bit later. So, but um, now they are all here, and um, it's a good situation, and that's what you want at the end of a preseason that you have a, a few choices to make, and then to start the season with the first game. And we know um, the intensity will now be completely different, and we think at the moment we are ready for it, but we have to prove that on Saturday. Okay, thank you, Vinny. Two for Steve Wythe, and then we'll go to Juliet Franklin from the BBC. Hello there, Jürgen. Having right. said you, you've had that pre-season to work with your players and considering all the injury problems you had last season, how close are you to, to having the team you want to select for the first game of the campaign? Oh, they're all here and uh, um, all our players are here in the moment and that means we have to make um, selection. Well, how, but of course, for example, Hendo and Thiago started late. To train, so their their, their preseason, if you want, started last week, and they need it because we don't prepare for one game. We prepare for a full season with a lot of games, with the most intense in the most intense league in the world. So, um, apart from that, um, all the others trained at least two weeks, um, and some of them have said trained five weeks. So I have exactly the situation I want to have. Um, I hope it stays like this. That we we had so far, we have no major. Injuries apart from Robo, obviously, who is um, not available for the weekend, and Curtis, but he is fit again. It's just a protocol, and we, we of course respect that. And um, so that's it, and that's now the situation, a good situation. But still, um, I have to make some decisions. And you mentioned there the intensity of the Premier League, considering <laughs> that some of your rivals have gone out and, and really invested heavily this summer. Are you expecting that the fight for the Premier League title to be even more intense than ever this time around? I don't know if that could is that possible. So um, yeah, last year obviously um, uh, City um, clear, oh yeah, was um, no. the gap was pretty big uh, the year before. With us, the gap was pretty big. Um, I'm not sure if it can get even more intense for all the rest. So we will see. Yeah, Chelsea obviously. Uh, is not hiding expect uh, the ambitious ambitions and Man United isn't, City isn't. We don't want to hide our expectations because our ambitions because we, uh, we 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 want to fight for everything. But whatever will happen in the season, we don't know now. But um, in this moment, yeah, it will be a massive fight. And the, I mentioned only these four, but it will not be only these four. Looks like Leicester made really good business again. Um, 
Arsenal is trying, Tottenham is obviously trying really hard uh, and there are so many teams. Uh, West Ham played the best season for a long, long time last year. They didn't get worse over the summer. So they are, uh, it, will, it will be an interesting league again, very, very interesting. So let's see how it starts and then we can talk about that and then let's make the next step. Plenty of interest in Arsenal, Frank. No problem, Steve. We've got Juliet Farrington then, Ian from Salzburg. Juliet, for one. Hey, Jürgen, good to see you again. Yeah. Um, after the brilliant pre-season that you would have appeared to have had with that month away, you know, just training and working in that your own little bubble that you had, um, are you as excited, and you talk about playing for the fans with their expectations and dreams, are you as excited as the fans are for this season? Definitely. We had exactly the same time to... to we were ex waiting exactly for the same amount of time, so... Um, I had four weeks preseason training, um, which is absolutely great, or five weeks, it's absolutely great, and um, I love that, and it's the best part of the season, actually, because you can work on all the things you want to see later in, this, in, the, in the season, and it was good, it was good, but unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that the preseason of Norwich or the other teams were, were, not, were not bad as well, so they will be really good prepared as well, so that's good, so the, the most important thing is that you are ready for the competition then and this is a completely different intensity to pre-season games obviously which we have now again in the Premier League everything together missing a chance in a pre-season friendly is not a problem it's always easy to explain we had a hard session before yesterday and stuff like this now we should be rested we, we, I don't expect 100% um, I expect 100, the available 100% tomorrow. That means um, I want us to develop during the season to reach a specific point, our absolute peak, and keep that then going for the full season. Um, but I expect the available 100% for tomorrow, and that's a lot. So and that's what we have to show. And then we have to be ready for all these pressure situations that you that you score or they, they score, and you have to react and all this kind of stuff. And that's something you can talk about in preseason, what we did, but then there's a difference, still a difference between the reality and what we were talking about before. So, how do we react in, in stress situations? That's all interesting and I'm really excited about that, that it's starting now again because we all want to play proper competitive games. Preseason is important, but we all prepare only for the league and the league starts now and it's very exciting. Thank you, Juliet. We'll go to Ian uh, for TalkSport and then to Carl Woodward from BBC Merseyside. Hi, uh, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, yeah, were you surprised that clubs like Manchester City spent £100 million on one player this summer? That um, Obviously, we saw Manchester United spend over £100 million on a couple of players and that Chelsea spent nearly £100 million on a striker, considering we've just come through a pandemic. And how important is this to get a good start to the season as well? February 2020, when when it when the pandemic started and we uh, nobody knew how it will how it how long it will be and on. But I, I was hoping, obviously, that it's over in a month, in two months, whatever. Now we we are so much smarter, we know so much more about it, and it's still uh, still um, difficult time. So it was for everybody. It was for football clubs as well, obviously, for different reasons. And that's probably the reason why you asked me if I'm surprised. No, because these clubs don't depend on this kind of things. I think um, it's just not. Um, yeah, we, we all know the situation of Chelsea and we all know the situation of City and we all know the situation of um, of PSG, for example. What United is doing, I don't, I don't know exactly how they do it, but we have obviously our way to do it. And that's what was always the same. Since I'm in, it was always the same. We can spend and we are allowed to spend the money we earn. Um, that's what we always did. So this year uh, we spent already before we earned money um, with with Ibu Kunate because after last season it was obviously clear we cannot take any risk in this position at all, um, and that's it. And um, that's our situation. And it's not about me being surprised. I'm, I'm never surprised about the, the financial power of Chelsea or City or United. Uh, I'm long enough in the country to know that they always find a solution to do these kind of things. And um, for us, it's our way. So uh, we keep the team together. That's um, uh, 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 that's an important part of business as well. I know it's not that as exciting as it is with um, with signing new players for the outside world, but it looks like always this, the summer is always the same. If you people think if you don't sign, you don't work, that's not the case. We are constantly um, thinking about the presence 
the, or the past, and the past not so much, the present and the future, so short term and long term. What do we have to do? What can we do? How, can, how does it look? Uh, well, how has the team to look this year? How will it look next year and all this kind of stuff? And that's the situation. So maybe not the most exciting, but if you are a real Liverpool fan, you are really happy about the news the club delivered in the last few weeks. So signing Alison Becker um, until, I don't know uh, when, um, the same with Trent Alexander-Arnold, Fabinho, um, um, who else did, Virgil. sorry? Virgil. Oh, virtual, yeah, obviously recently, only recently. So, and others will follow, so that's great. That's absolutely great news, but it's just not as spectacular out there, obviously, seen as it was. But if other teams wanted to sign these players, they would have to pay a lot of money, and we have them already, so that's good. So now we have a really good squad together. Um, we should be in a better situation than we were last year. So let's try to build on that, what, what we achieved last year, and let's see where it will, we will end up. And is a, Ian also asked, is a good start important? Sorry? Is a good start important, as opposed to is a bad start important? Yeah. yeah. A good start is important, but we will not. We wouldn't stop if we, if we couldn't start well. So um, that's that's the case. But yeah, I, I love to to win the first game, but I think it would be disrespectful for, to talk about these kind of things before we face Norwich. Even so, we have to go there. We will do that this afternoon um, to have a nice sleep overnight, play there tomorrow afternoon. And I know how good they are, and I know how how great the job is Daniel Falk is doing there. They obviously gave him for a situation for a club of like Norwich is incredible trust in him a, a new four year contract which is absolutely great um, so they believe there in the, his work and the project uh, and you can see that they lost good players or one at least uh, what I know about and they, but they brought, did sensational business uh, Billy Gilmore is probably obviously one of the biggest Scottish talent for the last 50 years uh, bring him in on loan then Rashika I know from the Bundesliga Sargent I know from the Bundesliga so two really good exciting strikers offensive players so Los Bundia, yes, but um, the replacements they found now the little Greek boy who came in last week. So good business. So exciting what they are doing. And um, we have to be absolutely spot on to have a good start. And if we had a good start, then we can talk about that. Okay. We're going to order Carl Woodward and from Merseyside, and then we'll go to Carl Markham from Press Association. Carl. Hi, Jürgen. Hi, Carl. Um, just reflecting on the end of last season, the top four looked at it was getting away from you until you made that brilliant dash to the line. So how much a boost did that give to you and the players and what can you take from that going into the new campaign? Oh, absolutely. We, we, we had to, a lot, a lot. Um, this again, this kind of never give up. And I, I would like to say that I ten met ten games before the end of the season. That I thought, oh come on, we can do that still and stuff like this. It wasn't like that. I didn't think about it. That helped. I, I just thought, come on, let's win the next game. Let's see where we end up. And in, uh, in the end, that what helped. So we just stayed in a situation. Yes, last two three games, we knew it's kind of in our in our own hands again, and it can pressure up again. Uh, we came through it. We we for us. The third place last year was really not far off the other positions in the two years before in the league, to be honest, um, and was really special with all the problems we had. We found in the end a way how to win football games, um, and now that's a very important message, obviously, because there's one way how you play when you are at your absolute best. That's obviously great to watch and what you want to see and um, makes winning football games more likely. But then there is another way to win football games when you are not at your best, when you have to solve problems. We need a little bit to 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 find this way exactly how we can do it. It's not that it's rocket science and we don't know how it works, but we need it a little bit to get used to this slightly different approach. And um, so, but we found it early enough finished the situation, it was obviously absolutely um, sensational feeling and yes, that will help us because it is another experience we made together and how all experiences, uh, when you